Hi guys, so in today's video, we are going to be doing a declutter of all of my lip gloss. I was doing declutters kind of starting at the top of my Alex Nigers and just working my way down. That's how I've done them in past years. But this time I kind of wanted to tackle categories that I feel like I've just got too much in and categories where I'd like to pass some things on to friends. And today that is my lip gloss category. You know, the unfortunate thing about lip gloss, if I'm being honest, and along with, along with any sort of wanded lip product is there's not really a great way to sanitize and or donate. So for these products, I really am going to be like pumping them out into my friends and family circle to get them into hands of people who really, really want them because these are not products that I can sanitize and give to like a Project Beauty Share for example. But we have a lot of lip glosses to talk about and I feel like I'm going to end up with quite a lot of duplicates. So here's what my drawers look like now and I've got these sort of stacked containers that I picked up at the container store and I've got kind of my main lip glosses on the top divided between cream and uh, shimmer. So here are the creams that I have and I just feel like it's just it's too much. It's more than I want. Um, and then here are the shimmer ones and then I actually probably need to pull a few out of my everyday makeup drawer uh, that are missing from here. I have down below, so I've got these stacked too high, I have ones that I would consider to be more lip lacquers, so things that have quite a lot of pigmentation to them. You wouldn't put them over the top of a lipstick. You would completely block out the lipstick color, so that's what's down here. I also have a section for lip oils, so things that are more hydrating. Off to the side, I've got this little container of lip balm type products. Probably should have done some of these in my lipstick declutter because they're more stick type products, but I just, I didn't touch them. Also have a little section of lip toppers, which if I'm being really honest I am not really using so I, I, I it'll be interesting to see if I decide to keep any of these and then one little thing that's tucked into the very very back uh, and this definitely should have pulled into my lipstick declutter is metallic liquefied lipsticks so there are four of them in here that I need to reckon with and in fact I can tell you right now I'm probably gonna pass this one on because this thing has leaked and I can't, oh there we go this one leaked and I feel like the whole bottom of this container is like super sticky as a result. Yeah, let me go gather up a few missing products and then we'll lay these out. All right, so here are all of my shimmer lip glosses. In looking at this, I just wanna see if there's any formulas right out of the gate that I don't care for. I feel like these are all brands and formulas that I do really like. Uh, I think at this point I wanna consider, are they shades that I'm actively wearing? And B, um, do I have any duplicates in here? All right, let's start back here. These are some of my more pinky toned glosses. So this is the shade Rebel Rebel from Marc Jacobs. It's this really interesting color that has kind of a blue shift in it. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus on that. It has this really interesting blue shift to it, which I think is kind of cool. Um, this is a really great formula. I will say this is one of the Marc Jacobs glasses that does have a smidge more pigmentation to it, but you can definitely still uh, sheer it out. I don't feel like it has the same amount as a lip lacquer. And then this is from Fenty. This is the shade Fussy. This is her more rosy toned gloss. I do really enjoy the Fenty gloss bombs. I think the formulas are really great. And I really do like that color. It's almost this color, but just lighter. This is newer to my collection. This is from Persona Cosmetics. Her lip gloss formula is also really nice. This is pink gloss. Um, you know, it's interesting, I, and I should tell you guys this now, I do not get on with sticky glosses. So pretty much everything that's in my collection now is not sticky. In fact, I even decluttered most of my buxom glosses because even they were just a little stickier than I would have liked. So that is the pinky gloss very nice gel-like formula. This is from Revlon. This is their Color Charge Lip Gloss. This thing comes limited edition. This is Sparkling Rose. It's a really light pink that has quite a lot of shimmer particles to it. And for a lot of these really light colored glosses like this, I really need to decide if it's worth keeping because I think when glosses get this, this sheer, you almost got to decide if it's worth worth hanging on to. And so part of the reason I want to swatch to this next to these next two is I feel like both of these are ones that don't lay down a lot of color, 
that just are more about shine and a little bit of sparkle. So this is Makeup Revolution. I think this is a limited edition collection. This is the Lip Topper in Exquisite. It's a really interesting pearlized pink shade. But yeah, see that has even less pigmentation to it. Although it is pretty similar now that I swatch those side by side. I do think that is pretty similar to the Revlon one. This next one is from Fenty. This is Diamond Milk. I honestly, I don't know, I feel like I got this because I thought it would be super useful to have a clear gloss with just a whole bunch of like pearlized shimmer in it. And in reality, I just am not, not using this completely clear gloss that I have going. This one in my mind is kind of on the chopping block. Uh, this is a little one from the history of uh, Faux, which is a Korean beauty brand. The packaging is absolutely stunning. I picked this up when I obviously was in Korea and this is just a clear gloss with gold glitter in it. So it's kind of, it's very sheer and I don't feel like it does a whole heck of a lot. This I've held on to honestly for sentimental reasons as well as, I mean, you can't get over how beautiful this packaging is, number one. All right, this is the original Fenty lip gloss in Fenty Glow. I do really like this. I actually think this is a great value for money too. If you're somebody who goes through a lipstick or rather a lip gloss, this at a price per ounce perspective is comparable to drugstore pricing. Like this really is a really affordable product. This is a gorgeous color and as you can see it's definitely a lot more nude than the pinky shades down there. This is from Becca. This is their lip glow gloss rather in lilac geode. I picked this up with the lilac geo highlighter which I ended up not liking. It was too gold on me. And this one is still a little, this one's a little pinker. This isn't a bad gloss. I did enjoy it. I don't know as if I like it as much as some of my other formulas, but it is a really pretty pinky gold with a hint of lavender in it. This is Marc Jacobs. This is a little Mamie sample of in let's see, cream and sugar. It has a load of glitter in it, silver and gold glitter. It's really pretty. I'm gonna swatch this here because I feel like it's gonna end up being very comparable to these other sort of light shimmery glosses down there. Yeah, I agree, it's very similar. This is from Essence. This is Shine 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 lipstick, lip gloss rather. I love this, this is the shade Bright On. Gorgeous formula, price point on this is crazy cheap. In fact, let's swatch this here because I'm curious to see how these are starting to swatch by one another. Gorgeous shade, love this. Really nice and sparkly nude from Chanel. This is very old. Um, I need to actually do a sniff test real fast, but this is the shade 11 Glossomer and it's sort of this gold peach pink shade. And this is fairly pigmented, but it can also be worn more sheared out. It smell like it's gone off. And then I've got two more corally shades down at the end here, one that's brighter than the other. So this is the Persona Cosmetics Lip Gloss in Coral. This one has a little bit of a gold shift to it. And this is such a really pretty orangey, tomatoey red gloss. I wasn't expecting to like this gloss as much as I did. In terms of color, I kind of thought I would be reaching for this more pinky mauve tone shade more, and I love this one. And then this is from Marc Jacobs. This is the shade Some Girls, which is a lighter, more corally pink shade. Definitely going to be um, more pink and more sheer than the Persona gloss that we just talked about. All right, guys, so here's what I'm thinking. I'm gonna zoom you in a little bit so you can see these swatches as I talk. So these three shades here, the Marc Jacobs, the Fenty uh, more pinky gloss, as well as the Persona glosses, these are all in that sort of rosy tone family that I really enjoy. And I do feel like this one is a little warmer, this one's more light, and this one's more of a true mauvey pink. So I do wanna keep all three of these. I am gonna go ahead and pass on this shade here from Revlon. It's really pretty, but I do feel like I wanna keep one sort of lighter topper type shade. And so I, I've decided to keep this Makeup Revolution one. I'm gonna actually pass the Fenty one on to a friend. I think my stepdaughter might actually like that one. And I'm also gonna go ahead and pass on this super fancy gold one. I'm gonna also pass on this shade here, which is from Marc Jacobs. I just don't see myself reaching for it, even though I like the formula. The shade was never my favorite. So this is the Fenty original Fenty Glow. I do think I wanna keep that. I'm gonna go ahead and pass on this shade though from Becca. I just, I don't know, I don't, 
don't love it and I'm, I'm gonna pass on this one from Chanel as well I think a friend would really enjoy this one more and get more use out of it than me and then I do think I'm gonna keep these remaining three so this sort of more toffee brown shade there from um, Essence and then these two brighter corally type shades at the very end here from Persona and Marc Jacobs so that is what the new sort of tray looks like I like that it's all in one layer I can see everything that is in here let's go ahead and move on to the cream shades, so ones that don't have any sparkle or shimmer to them. All right, so I definitely have far more cream than I have anything else. Uh, I've put sort of these warmer tone shades down here, so peaches into sort of more of brownie nudes, and then we go into sort of berries and mauves, and then more what I would consider to be, I don't know, cool toned, almost more gracious shades down here. So I think I'm gonna pull all the warmer type shades off to the side, and we'll just focus down on the more cool tone shades first. All right, so here are the more cool toned uh, shades, the berries, the mauves, and then into some of these more grazy type tones down here. Uh, let's just go first row on back. So this is from Wet n Wild. This is one of their liquid cat suits. This is in the shade Wine is the Answer. Um, I did get some good use out of this. It is darker. In fact, I probably should put this, you know what? That is so pigmented now that I am looking at it that I am gonna plop that in the lip lacquers. In fact, I actually wonder if I've had these in the wrong place. Yeah, you know what? I am gonna move all of these wet and wild ones to my lip lacquer section. All right, continuing on. This is a brand called Noya. I believe they are both cruelty free as well as sort of going in that clean beauty direction. This is the shade Malbec. I do really like this one. It's sort of that pinky fuchsia color, but because it's more of a thin stain, it's not too intense. And I really have enjoyed this one. I do feel like it's pretty unique in my collection. Uh, this is one of the Essence Shine, Shine, Shine. This is in the shade for a night out. Dang it, I have not sorted these well. Let me compare this one real fast to the Marc Jacobs one that I kept. So there is the Shine 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 one. It's definitely more mauve -y. Let me just compare that real fast to this Marc Jacobs one that I kept in Rebel Rebel. Nah, those are different. Definitely more nude from the Marc Jacobs and more plummy from that. All right, I do really like this color and I really like this formula too, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep this one. This one has a hint of shimmer to it, but it's don't, I don't feel like there's a ton in here, which is why I've kept it sort of with these creams. This is from Hard Candy, and this is their Plumping Serum Gloss. This is the shade Ooh La La, and I did really like both this formula and this color, but I do start to wonder um, if this is gonna look like some of the ones we're gonna look at here in a second, and so whether or not it's gonna make it through. It's just this really sheer, sort of light mauve pink color. Next up is another shade from Essence, Shine Shine Shine. This is probably my favorite shade from them, and I feel like the color I may have worn off. Yeah, the color is actually worn off. It was on this sticker. I will have to look this shade up and put it on the screen. This has definitely been a favorite gloss of mine. It's just sort of a nudie pink gloss and I really love the undertone and the texture and I yeah this is probably one of my favorite glosses so I can tell you now that's not going anywhere but let's look at this last one in this row stay this is from julep this is their ultra hydrating lip gloss in vibes it is a nice gloss it's not too sticky it's definitely lightly pigmented, nothing too crazy. Let's go ahead and keep going because I think we're gonna have some carryover from these up into this top row. This is from Milani. This is their Keep It Full Nourishing Lip Plumper. This is slightly plumping. This is the shade Rosewood. Not as extreme as the Buxom ones, but uh, definitely lays down quite a bit of color, but it's still sheer. Like it doesn't have that same blam pigmentation that some other shades have. I do like this formula quite a lot. In fact, I've got a second one we're gonna look at here in just a second. And then this is the NYX Butter Gloss. This is in the shade Angel Food Cake. 
also a long time favorite of mine, but I wonder if this one is gonna be smell okay. Let me do a sniff test. A little stuffy today, so I can't, I don't notice any scent going off on that. So I'm gonna go ahead and assume that that's okay. Let's just move a couple of these around here. Uh, next up, this is from ColourPop. This is their Ultra Glossy Lip in the shade Finders Keepers. I like the ColourPop lip gloss formula. I don't think it's my favorite like end all be all shade. This one is definitely more of a cool toned nude. It's a pretty color. It's definitely pretty pigmented as well. And it doesn't look like it's gone off in the container the way that some color pops do. Uh, this is a really pretty cool toned cream shade from Essence Shine Shine Shine. This is in the shade So Into It. I also really like this one for when I want a more brownie cool toned nude. And then this is a, another sort of cool toned gloss from Marc Jacobs. This is the shade Skin Deep. Definitely one I've mentioned on my channel before as being slightly more brownie and cool toned and great for making a nude lipstick that is a little too warm uh, come off as a little bit more cool toned. Not necessarily by adding pink, but just by adding a little bit of that brownish undertone. Then finally, this one that's been rolling everywhere, this Milani, another nourishing lip plumper. This is in the shade Almost Natural. It's very, very light and it's creamy and it's great for, I would never wear this on its own, but I do like it as a more utilitarian lip gloss uh, because it's fantastic at lightening lipsticks that I just feel like ended up a little bit darker than I wanted. All right, here's what we're looking at for more of the cool tone shades. This isn't great guys. I'm not sure I wanna get rid of a ton of these to be honest. I do really like this shade. It's a great berry shade. I wear it a lot in the winter time when my lips are drier, but I still want more of a punchy bold color. These two are looking very similar. So the julep as well as the hard candy one, they're looking very similar, but to be honest, I've not been reaching for them a ton. I've been reaching for something and when I want that shade, I've been reaching for something with a little bit of shimmer to it, something more like the Persona Gloss. And so because I felt like I kept three sort of rosy shades here, I'm kind of feeling like I'm going to pass these two on. In fact, I'm going to. Let's just do that. Um, this shade here from Essence, I definitely know that I'm keeping. So keeping those two. In terms of this back row here, I think I'm gonna go ahead and pass on this NYX Butter Gloss in Angel Food Cake. I do like this formula. I do like this color quite a bit, but I feel like this is getting, it's really old and I, I don't know, I'm just getting a little nervous about that one. So I think I'm gonna pass that on. I wanna keep the shade Rosewood. I love that color from Milani. I do like this color pop shade. I need to remember to pull it in a little bit. And then these last three here, um, this one that's very utilitarian, I'm definitely keeping. But these two browns, although they are similar, I feel like they're different enough that I wanna keep them. One's got a hint more of a pinky undertone, which is the Marc Jacobs one. And then this one from uh, Essence really is that really pretty wearable cool tone brown on me. So. I think I wanna keep these. All right, so I moved over a couple warm toned ones to the lip lacquer section. I just thought they were miscategorized, but let's go ahead and look at the ones I have here. Um, one is from Bite Beauty. This is Dirty Chai from their French press collection. It smells like coffee. Um, if you saw my September favorites, you know that this was one of those shades that I was reaching for a ton. It's a really pretty sort of neutral, warm toned gloss. This is another ColourPop glossy lip. This is the shade Aquarius. So when Kathleen Lights did, gosh, I thought she do an ultra satin lip first or lippy stick in this first, and then she came back and released Aquarius in every lip form that they had. Um, this one's just a little bit pinker. You can see that there. This one's got a little bit more warmth to it and this one's just got a little bit more pink to it. And then this is another one from ColourPop. This was the Disney Designer Collection in the shade Bobbity, which was more of a corally color, which I thought was really pretty. This is from Makeup Revolution. This is I Heart Revolution Chocolate Orange. I like this a lot. Um, this is, although would I consider this to be a lip lacquer? Yeah, now that I'm swatching that, this one has enough pigmentation that I think I would consider it a lip lacquer. I'm gonna move it over there. Probably not one I see myself getting rid of though. This is Butter Gloss and Creme Brulee, probably one of their most popular shades. I'm trying to decide if I wanna keep this one as well because I feel like these are 
super old. Like, I think they might be pushing four years old at this point. Yeah, that one looks like it's changed. I can see strange little things in it. All right, that one I think is gonna get chucked. Just scooted that over. This last gloss is from Laroc. This is from their Beauty and the Beast collection. This was Savoy Fair. I did like this gloss um, quite a bit, but I'm trying to decide if it's gonna be too similar to the Disney designer collection. Disney's just been collabing with everyone and their mother lately on uh, different brands for makeup. I've just seen so many brands doing things with Disney. I feel like, although these are not exactly the same, I think they're fairly similar and they're serving a sp specific function in my life. So just swatch these on my hand real fast and see if I can feel, if I like the formula better. I feel like the this one here from Lorac is a little stickier than the ColourPop ones. Yeah. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep these three here and I'm gonna go ahead and chuck this one and then see if my stepdaughter wants this one from The Rock. So that is what we're sitting in here. Uh, I still have a couple that are sitting on top uh, per se, but it's definitely a lot easier to see in this container than it was before. I Let's go ahead and do the more pigmented glosses, so things that I would consider to be lip lacquers next. All right, so these are my lip lacquers. I have quite a few of these liquid cat suits, and I don't know if I wanna keep all of them. In fact, this first shade, I don't think I'm gonna keep. Although it works, and I can, it doesn't like smear all over my face, I haven't been reaching for these super dark lacquers really much at all. So this is Wine is the Answer. It's a beautiful color. It's just very intense and very glossy, and I tend to find myself reaching for shades like this more in a matte liquid lipstick format than something super shiny. This shade is interesting. This is the shade Cedar Later. It's more of a sort of warm toned brown shade that I do think is really pretty and I don't have a ton of these kinds of colors in my collection so I do like that color. Um, this is from CoverGirl. This is their Melting Pout Vinyl. Where's my other one of these? You know what? I think the other melted vinyl may have ended up in my liquefied lipsticks for my last collection. Yep, sure enough, I had actually tossed this other color up in my um, liquefied lipsticks. I have kept this through my earlier declutter so I don't think I'm gonna get rid of it now because I do feel like it was a unique color from my last collection. Uh, that is a more sort of mid-toned pinky color with a hint of salmon in it. Uh, this is the shade Caught Up. This is the shade Toasted Grill. So let's swatch this here. And it's very similar to the one I just swatched. It's just a lot lighter. Now we get into some more peachy colors. So a liquid catsuit from Wet n Wild in Peach Stole My Look. This is one where I don't necessarily know if I feel super passionate about keeping it. Uh, this is from Catrice. This is one of their lip cushions they've discontinued these. I panned an entire one of these in a mauve shade last year and I did really like this formula. See, I'm more apt to want to keep this just because I like the formula um, more than I like that liquid catsuit one. This is from I Heart Revolution. This is chocolate orange. It smells like oranges and chocolate. It is a lovely formula and a gorgeous color. I love this color and it's funny. I have seen so many other YouTubers randomly try this shade in particular and just fall in love with it. It is beautiful. This is from Bare Minerals. This is their, what is this? Must have gloss in Brilliant. I think this is part of their, is this Gen Nude maybe? That is more pinky toned. Um, this is an NYX Intense Butter Gloss in Tres Leches. Definitely one of my favorite shades. Don't know as if this one ha will have gone off. It's pinkier and I really love it. So you can see we've moved from sort of the peaches into the pink tone shades. This is from Milani. This is their Amore Shine liquid lips, lipid lacquer is what they call it. Uh, this is in the shade Charming. I did really enjoy these. This formula it's, to me is very similar to the color uh, girl one in that they're super pigmented, but they're also very easy to wear. Uh, don't feel sticky or heavy or like gloopy the way that a lot of other lip vinyls do. So I did enjoy that as well as that color. Um, this is from Wet n Wild Liquid Cat Suit. This is the shade Chic Got Real. This is a much more 
uh, lilac y pinky purple shade. Really pretty. And then this is a really interesting lip lacquer from e.l.f. This is the shade T Rose. It's this really cool purpley color, and I always think I'm not going to like it, and then I wear it, and I really enjoy it. It's like this perfect dusky, murky purple color. So fun. And then finally from Mana Kadar, this is their Lip Locked Priming Gloss Stain. I don't think that I noticed this one staining per se, but it is a beautiful mauve color. It's one that every time I pull into my everyday makeup drawer, I'm really happy to be playing around with. So wide range of colors here. Um, I do think I'm gonna pass this first one on. I'm just not reaching for it, like I said. These two brownier tone shades from CoverGirl and Wet n Wild, I do think I want to keep these. However, I don't think I want to keep this peachy shade. It's just not my fave. I do think I'm going to keep this next shade from Catrice. It's just, it's really fun and easy to work with. I love that. These two shades, which look nothing alike in the container, end up looking really similar on my arm. I don't know how passionate I am about this Bare Minerals one. I think I'm going to pass that on to a friend. I'm going to keep the I Heart Chocolate shade here. And then in terms of these more cool tone shades, I feel like these two are very similar. So the NYX and the Mana Kadar. The NYX I feel like is a lot older though. So I think I'm going to go ahead and pass that on. I think I'm going to go ahead and hang on to these four because I do like the undertones of these. I do think that they are different from one another. So here's what this is sitting at right now in terms of lip lacquer things. I'm trying to decide if I want to chuck these in here or if I want to put them up in my Muji drawers. And I need to look at what's in my Muji drawers. So for the time being, I think I'm just going to put them right here. But I do want to look at my Muji drawers and decide if I've got this style in the right place or not. So I don't have a ton of these, so let's just go through what I do have. So this is from Clio. This is a Korean beauty brand. Um, let's see, it's called the Tension Lip Oil. The shade is 12 Nude Thrill. And I really, really like this color as well as this formula. It's just very slippy and shiny, but it's this kind of, it's this really pretty warm sort of rusty color that is gorgeous for fall. And then next I've got three lip oils from e.l.f. Uh, this is the shade Pink Kiss, and this is a really nice formula. It's more sheer, but it's really hydrating. Gives a tint of color to your lips, but nothing too, too much. Um, just really easy to work with, especially if you don't want a ton of pigmentation and you really want something super moisturizing which is why I've picked up a few other shades. Um, this one seems to have gone off though, if you can see that there. It's like completely separated. and I don't even wanna put that on my wrist, to be honest. We're just gonna put that in the declutter pile. Berry Kiss, this one is one that I had in my everyday makeup drawer fairly recently. And it was really pretty, I did like this. Uh, I could. I don't know if I see myself getting rid of it. It looks really dark and intimidating, which is why I always feel like, ah. But then when you put it on, it's just this really soft berry color. And then last, I have two of these sort of lip oils with a cushion applicator. This is from Clarins. This is the shade 7. They don't have the color on here, so I never remember. It is more of a cool toned brown shade, which is super strange. You would think it would be super pinky, but it just, it just isn't. And then... This is from Catrice, the kind to dupe it. It's their beautifying lip smoother. This is in the shade Coffee to Go. Very similar formula though. Of these ones that are left, I don't know as if I want to keep both of these. I know this one's more pinky and this one's more peachy. I think I'm gonna go ahead and pass that on and I think I'm just gonna keep these four. These are all sort of tinted lip balms. I do have a peach one of these up in my um, project pan for this year from Revlon uh, Kiss Balm. I'm not counting it in here because I'm trying to use it up, but let's go ahead and start with this one. So this is from Frank's Body. This smells like coffee as well. Uh, it's definitely more of a drugstore type price. This is their Send Nudes Lip Tint and it is it says go topless babe on the back that's really funny don't love the applicator i don't care for these plasticky ones but i did really like the product inside it's a very light tint super comfy to wear really really hydrating the coffee scent is amazing so i do really like this one and then this kiss balm from revlon is the apple shade and it gives just a hint of color 
just an ever so slight hint of red. This is old as dirt. This is from L'Oreal. This is their nude balm. I wore the heck out of this. This was in my purse for a long, long time. Um, it's one I just would throw on when I wanted a hint of color, especially while traveling. I can't imagine this is so good. So old. This is from Flower Beauty. This is their Petal Pout Lip Mask. This is the shade Nectar. I really liked this quite a bit. Once again, not my favorite applicator with these sort of plasticky ones, but a uh, really comfortable lip balm. Um, probably similar color to that Frank's Body one, but you know, with tinted lip balms, sometimes these very nude shades are what you'd prefer over something like more red or pink. And then this is a very fancy lip maximizer from Dior. I bought this a couple years ago because a friend loved it and swore by it. And I just never had the same affinity to this sort of plumping clear gloss that she did so i don't know i i might pass this on to somebody who would really enjoy a fancy dior clear lip gloss so this one from in the middle here i know needs to just be chucked and then this lip maximizer from dior i just it's clear it, it literally does nothing for me i'm not super in love with it and i think i could pass this on to a friend who would really enjoy a luxury lip gloss so I think I'm just gonna hang on to these three. All right, two more categories left. Let's tackle lip toppers next. Like I mentioned in the intro, I have not really been using lip toppers. Uh, I feel like there was a whole train of lip toppers that came out from high-end and drugstore brands and I just never like fell in love with them. So this is one from AOA Studios. This is their diamond lip gloss. This one has an absolute crap ton of iridescent glitter through it. Yeah, camera is not really doing that shade justice. It really has pink and teal and silver and green and maybe even orange micro shimmer running through it. It is a really pretty formula too. It's not thick. What I've noticed with a lot of these lip toppers is that they tend to be a little bit thicker. This one's really nice and thin. I, I still am not reaching for it though. These two from NYX, they're duochromatic glosses. This is the shade The New Normal, which is a pink with a green shift to it. This one is a lot thicker and is meant to kind of be, in my opinion, not worn straight all over, but kind of tapped out to mix, mess with different lip colors. And then this one is their chromatic purple shade in Gypsy Dreams. And this one has some micro shimmer in it as well to kind of give it that dimension. But it is that purpley shifting shade. If that was an eyeshadow, I would be all in on it because that's gorgeous. Uh, this is one from Jouer called Frostbite. And to be honest, I kind of feel about this like I did about the Diamond Milk from Fenty. I just, these super light white pearls. I'm just not, I don't know, not gaga for. I will admit I like this one better than I did the Diamond Milk. So if you've been looking for a shade in this sort of white pearlescent uh, topper style, I would recommend this over the um, Diamond Balm from Fenty. And then finally, this is from Bite. This is their uh, cream lip gloss in rose pearl. Listen, I bought this because the color was so crazy and shifty. Camera's even having a hard time picking up on it. There we go. The shifting is absolutely crazy between green and gold. I mean, it really is that like lip color that is five different colors. Maybe if I swatch this on my hand, I can get some of that shifting to appear. Now, I will say in general, it looks mostly rose. That green shift that I get when I tilt the con con uh, container around, I don't really get. Like, it really does look mostly rose. And then, let's see if I can get the other shift to show up. There we go, maybe coppery, less green, more coppery rose. I'm gonna put this on by itself, give me a second. All right, I don't know guys, it's just very metallic. I think it's one of those ones that I like better swatched than I do on my lips. I don't think I'm keeping any of these. All right, last section. These are metallic liquid and liquefied lipsticks. So let's go ahead and pull these out. These definitely should have been in my regular lipstick to clutter, but it is what it is at this point. Um, this one from NYX, I'm not even gonna open and swatch. It has leaked all over everything. It's got goo all over it. I'm just gonna chuck this in. This was their soft matte metallic in the shade Rome. So this is an interesting color from Jordana. I bought this specifically because I was going to a 
a Foo Fighters concert and I wanted a really funky lip color, something that I wouldn't normally wear, but I didn't want to spend a ton of money on it. So I went into, I think Walgreens and they had this little display of their black pearl metallic liquid lipsticks. And I got this one cause it's like navy blue slash pearl um, shifting. And it was kind of a pain in the rear end to deal with. Like it was, I really had to then, I tested it ahead of time. I ended up having to go get a lip liner from NYX to put underneath it because this just didn't last. It faded really quickly and really strangely. So I feel like this was a fun moment in time, but not something that I need to hang on to. This was one from Ofra in Monaco. And I do remember thinking the color was really pretty. This is old Ofra packaging. It's a really pretty mauve shade. And I do like the Ofra liquid lipstick formula too. Um, let's do this one next. So this is the L'Oreal Infallible Paints Metallic. This is the shade Moon Lust. I remember liking this formula. It's a very pretty nude. Yeah, I think I liked this one because it wasn't super metallic either. Like it just, it's a really pretty peachy nude. And then this is a really interesting color. This is actually in my everyday makeup drawer right now from CoverGirl, their Melting Pot Metallics. And this is the shade Mayhem. And it is a really pretty pumpkin spice shade that I also don't feel like is super metallic. Like it definitely has a hint of metallic to it, but it's not as much as the last two there. All right, so I just tried uh, this L'Oreal one on and it's just too 80s frosty lip look for me. So I think I'm gonna pass this on. Um, and I also think I'm gonna go ahead and pass on uh, this first shade from Ofra. It's pretty, I just, I know I'm not gonna reach for this over other mobs in my collection. Uh, but I have been playing around with this and I really do like this shade and it's not super screaming metallic either. So we'll hang on to this. I will probably end up putting this probably in my regular Muji drawers versus leaving it in my lip gloss drawer, which is where it's been living now. All right, guys, so you are looking at all of the lip glosses then decluttering. I will go through these and chuck the ones that have obviously gone off and then pass along ones that are still in good condition to friends and family who don't mind the fact that my lips have touched these ones. Um, I did go ahead and add two ColourPop ones in here. The more I stared at the colors, the more I looked at them inside of that cream collection. I just realized I wasn't gonna get use out of these and I have a friend that loves cool tone stuff so I know she'll like this and I think my stepdaughter will love this sort of peachy shade because she loves warmer colored glosses. So I'm going to pass those on to them. I think that'll get better use. So what you end up here is with uh, what I've decluttered, I've kept, or sorry, I've decluttered 30. I'm actually keeping 33. So that means I've decluttered 48%, which is feeling good because I really felt like I was drowning in glosses. So here is what the drawer looks like all put back together and kind of stacked up. Very easy for me to spot things, don't have lots of stuff running all over the place and I'm quite happy with how this looks. I will probably at some point in the future go through and decide if some of the stuff in my Muji drawers needs to come down or vice versa, but for today's purposes, I do like how this is sitting. So if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to tune into my channel. We're doing a lot more declutters throughout the rest of the year. Go Going through a whole bunch of different categories of makeup. If you guys have any special requests, definitely let me know down below. But I think the next one we're going to turn our sights to is um, my single eyeshadows, both cream, liquid, and powder, because I feel like that's another area that's kind of imploded a little bit, not imploded, exploded maybe, in terms of having too many um, more than I can use and I wanna be able to kind of pass them along. So hope you guys are having an amazing week. Look forward to chatting with you down in the comments. Bye.